Hey everyone, this is a quick rundown of the mid-journey updates from February. First, we have some great updates to the folder organization system on the website. Your existing folders should now be accessed by clicking this folder icon in the upper right. Click on any folder to view the images inside. Be mindful of any filters that you have selected, they'll still apply. To create a new folder, click here and give it a name. You can add images by dragging them into a folder or by right-clicking and selecting Add To. Right-clicking on a folder gives you options like Download, which lets you save all images at once. And we can now create folder groups to organize related content. So if you're working on, say, a graphic novel, for example, you might want separate folders for characters, scenes, and style tests, and then you can place those into a folder group. Next, we can now create images directly within a folder. Select your folder either from the Organize page or the Create page. When you click the prompt bar, it shows that you're generating within that folder. Any images that you create while a folder is selected will automatically be added to that folder, and you can see that folder assignment when you open up one of these images. This is perfect if you've been using Discord channels to organize your projects on a private server. This feature mimics that capability. It's a great way to keep things organized when you're working on multiple projects and want to easily come back later and pick up where you left off. The final part of the image organization update is that Smart Folders is now called Saved Searches. This should be used when you're repeatedly searching your gallery for image results from prompts that contain specific words, phrases, or parameters. Saved Searches dynamically update as new images match your criteria. To create one, click Add Search and enter your text or parameters. These work as string searches that scan through all of your prompts for matches. For example, I want to see all of the images that I've created with my Wesley character reference, so I've added the CREF parameter and the image URL. I saved that, and then clicking on this saved search shows me all of my Wesley images. For one-time searches, you can use the search bar up here, but for searches that you perform regularly, try creating a saved search instead. Improvements to the image editor are coming soon. We'll get better selection tools beyond the current adjustable brush, plus a new layers feature. I'm really curious to see how that works. They've mentioned that we might be able to do things like place an animal's head on top of a human body and then retexture the combined result. These updates are expected in the next couple of weeks. Let's talk about V7. Again, I'm feeling a bit like a broken record, but they are in the final stages of the training process. They've said that the Omni reference system is looking really good and should work with characters, scenes, objects, and logos. It's not clear if the character reference parameter will be replaced completely with the new Omni reference feature, or if both character and Omni reference parameters will be available in V7. They've also confirmed that V7 should be backwards compatible with SREF codes as well as mood board and personalization profiles from V6, which is great news. The V7 release is expected in March. On the video front, after considering partnering for a model release, it now sounds like Midjourney will likely develop their own model. They have a small video model that is improving every week, and they may ask the community to help with video rating in the next couple of weeks, so keep an eye on their announcements for that. The goal for pricing is to make video accessible across all plans. Even the basic plan should allow for some video creation, although it might be quite limited. We should see the first video model after the V7 release. For 3D, they've successfully generalized their model to work with all mid-journey images, which was a major milestone. The short-term goal is to let you move the camera angle to reframe your image. In the more distant future, they're looking at something like a world model, but that's still a ways off. The Midjourney team continues to hint at some secret projects that they're working on. At recent office hours, we've been told that they've acquired a large warehouse where they're constructing large physical things with scaffolding and lots of wires. There's half a dozen or so of these projects that they plan to reveal this year, so we'll have to wait and see what those are. Before we wrap up, I wanted to share that all of my curated SREF codes are now available in a single PDF guide. The collection includes 429 SREF codes with example images. 123 of these are new. I also added a categorized visual index, making it much easier to find SREFs that work well for illustrations, photorealism, and more. 
This SREF collection is really a labor of love for my favorite Midjourney feature. I've got a short demo video and info on how to access the full collection linked below. So that's it for our February roundup. If you found this update helpful, please consider liking, subscribing, and maybe even joining my Patreon community where I share monthly prompt collections and Midjourney guides. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.